Hi everyone, I am back for another video on essential oil basics and this video is going to talk about some safety tips. Just like with anything, you need to make sure that you are using things appropriately, that you're doing your own research, that you're using common sense. All of those things are super important, right? So the first thing I want to talk about is something called photosensitivity. There are certain essential oils that can amplify the effects of the sun's UV rays. And this can be problematic if you put them on your face and then go out sunbathing all day. Just like uh, girls used to put lemon juice in their hair and sit out in the sun to help bleach it, it's the same kind of principle with the essential oils. They're going to amplify the effects. You do not want that on your skin when you're going outside. So anything that has a citrus oil or a blend that has a citrus oil in it, make sure you're putting it on either at night or an, on a part of you that's going to be covered. It just can't be in direct sunlight for the day. Another thing I wanted to mention was some oils are hot. Just like when you're cooking in the kitchen, certain herbs are spicier. Like your oregano is going to be very, very hot oil and it's going to cause an irritation on your skin if you put it on your skin straight or undiluted. Cinnamon is another oil that's very spicy, very strong. You wanna make sure that you're using a carrier oil when you're applying it to your skin. So that could be coconut oil or olive oil, jojoba oil, there's so many carrier oils. Uh, and I will be covering that in another video. Just make sure that you are diluting the oils that are hot and if you forget, you can always put the carrier oil on top of the essential oil. No harm, it will do the same thing. Um, if it was irritating your skin, it should stop almost immediately once that carrier oil helps to spread it out and just dilute it for that purpose. Um, I also want to say that less is more when you're dealing with essential oils. You wanna make sure that you start with just a few drops of oil, maybe even one, because sometimes all it takes is one drop to get the effect that you're looking for. And you wanna make sure that you're not wasting your precious oils. Only use as much as you need. So you start with just one or two drops and then you can always increase the drops. I definitely recommend using carrier oils. It just helps stretch them that much further. Carrier oils are great for different DIYs or if you're doing like a massage and applying it on over a large area of your body, you're getting that same benefit but you're not using as much of the oil. And I also just want to caution you, uh, I'm talking about a very specific kind of essential oils that are very high quality. There are lots and lots of companies now that sell essential oils and it's great that you have lots of choices, but you just have to know where you're purchasing them and where the quality is. It's the same thing as like going out to eat, right? If you have a very low budget, you're probably gonna go to a fast food place and grab a burger. If you have an unlimited budget, maybe you're gonna go to a seafood joint and get lobster and steak, right? You're going to pay a very different amount for those two meals based on how much they cost, um, based on how they acquire those foods, right? Your fast food is probably a frozen patty that they throw on the grill and it's cooked in a few minutes versus the lobster that has to be caught and then prepared and it's a much more lengthy process. And essential oils are no different. If you are paying super cheap for an essential oil, chances are it's probably not the greatest quality, especially if you're talking about like a, a difficult oil to harvest, like frankincense has to be harvested after the tree is like 100 years old and they have to take the resin from the tree and then distill that and it's a whole process. So if you found a bottle of frankincense for like 15, 20 bucks, that's a huge red flag that there's no way that a company can sustain that price and make a profit if it's pure frankincense. Because unfortunately, they can label it pure even if it's only 5% pure essential oil. That could be 95% synthetics added in there. But unfortunately, they can still call it pure essential oil. So you really have to trust the company. You really can't go on the label uh, so much because of the loose, loose regulations. And if you are uh, researching and you come across a study of something about essential oils. Another unfortunate thing is they don't, in these studies often, they don't differentiate between natural uh, pure oils and synthetic essential oils. So 
they might do a test on lavender and post their findings and that lavender that they used was like the kind you buy at the grocery store that's full of synthetic chemicals and it's not real lavender. It's probably not even the lavender plant. They probably use the cousin of lavender, lavadin, which has totally different properties than lavender. And then they publish their findings uh, on that lavender oil that they used. And they're not super great about saying uh, what specific brand they used and if it was natural or synthetic. So make sure you do your research. Make sure when you are uh, finding different sources that you are just keeping that in mind. It's the same thing um, with California has some different labels that are required to be on products based on some laws that they have. Same thing, synthetic versus natural, it doesn't matter to them uh, because they're basing it on a study and the findings, even though the study's findings were on synthetic chemicals, totally, totally different, whole different ballgame. But those are just a few safety tips. If you have questions, you can comment below, you can shoot me a message, and I will be jumping on here um, next video to share more information about essential oils 101.